Hello and welcome to our third annual Stopping Out Stigma event. I want to thank all our community partners that have showed up today to support us along the way through all the work that we all do together. Without all of us together, we probably couldn't do this work. I also want to do a big shout out to the fire department that filled our dunk tank. So make sure you go and dunk some of our coaches, some of our community members. They need to get wet. First up to speak to us today for Stop It Out Sigma is Ed Baker from the Addiction Recovery Channel. Let's give it a round of applause for Ed. Hey, good morning, everyone. I want you to please uh, humor me. Just humor me. I want you to come together a little bit. I really like it if everybody could come together a little bit on this beautiful day. Stomping out stigma. Let's hear it for Rutland. Yeah, stomping out stigma. Come on. I'd like you to gather together a little bit. Just together. Make me happy. Stomping out stigma. Yeah. I want you to remember one thing today, everyone. One thing. As you're stomping out stigma, the power comes from the spring in your step. The beautiful life spring in your step. The energy that you put out. Come on. I want to thank you, Mike, for your kind introduction. I want to say, I want to say how happy I am and how honored I am to be here with you today. When Tracy gave me the opportunity to be here, my immediate response was yes, because that's what I've been taught. I've been taught to say yes when given the opportunity to give back a little bit. And I want to start out with a big thank you. I could never in my lifetime give back to you what you have given me, what the recovering community has given me. You have given me my life. Thank you. It was easy, easy to say yes. Shut up. Hey, my friend. It was easy to say yes to Tracy. Listen, we don't want that. It was easy, easy to drive down here with my lovely wife, having a great conversation about our golden years, things we have to look forward to. It was easy. It reminds me of a time, to be exact, April of 2019, when I got a quick text from a dear friend of mine, Sue, who I had lost contact with over 25 years ago. And in the text she said, Eddie, a bunch of us are putting together a roundup and we want you to speak at it. I said, yes, because that's what I was taught to do. The following week I found out that the roundup was in Ketchikan, Alaska. <laughs> I thought it was in Vermont. It was in Ketchikan. Does anybody know where Ketchikan, Alaska is? Well, if you head west along the Canadian border to the Pacific Ocean and then go up, you're in Ketchikan. It's over 3,000 miles away. So I came to the conclusion that I was being summoned by my higher power and I had the right of choice. I could say no. Eh. I don't know if you really want to say no to your higher power, so I said yes, and I went to Ketchikan, Alaska. They treated me so well, they got me a little motel room on the strip, restaurant included. I hung out with them every day, went to meetings, went to their clubs, had a great time. They even got me like an aerial tour in a plane with pontoons on it, going around, you know, looking at Alaska from the sky. It was incredible. So, the day before I was to speak, I had what I'm going to call a Category 4 anxiety attack. Has anybody ever had one of those? Category 4. Category 5 is the worst. I had a Category 4. She had one. Category 4 anxiety attack. And I felt inadequate. I felt like I wasn't enough. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't interesting enough. These people are treating me so well, they must expect something from me, what do you expect? I feel inadequate, so I went to my friend Chris, who had become my friend over the previous four days, and I was honest with him. And Chris looked at me, he looked in my eyes, he looked to my heart with that beautiful, warm, soft smile of his, and he said, Eddie, 
We want you to speak from your heart. That's what we're expecting of you. And I know, I know that that's what you're expecting of me. So I'm Eddie. And I'm a, I'm a person with a lived experience of many years uh, of severe alcohol use and all the problems that that brings. I'm Eddie. And I'm a person with a lived experience many years of severe drug addiction and the problems that those behaviors bring. I'm Eddie. I'm a person that spent years unhoused, injecting drugs. I had a hard time, like many of you have had a hard time. I've been hospitalized twice near death. Once for a fatal disease that I contracted as a result of injecting drugs, no doubt about it. Another time with a stab wound that came very close to my heart that was directly a result of behaviors that I had engaged in because of my drug use and what happened to my brain. My brain wasn't working. I did things that weren't, didn't make any sense, like many of you have done. I think we bond through our suffering, so I'm telling you about my suffering. Yeah, we bond through virtue and we bond through accomplishment, but we bond through suffering. And I want you to know that I've been beat up, beat up by the war on drugs, beat up to a pulp by the war on drugs and stigma. I hit bottom a hundred times. I was punished for it. Punishment doesn't work. And I'm here to tell you, I hit safety one time. I hit safety one time, and safety worked. And that's what you're about. You're about safety. You create a world where you lessen stigma, and you show joy, and you show hope, and you create safety for people like me and people like you. And that's what we need. We need safety. I walked into a room on July 22, 1984, in Morrisville, Vermont, and it was safe. People looked at me, there were no expectations, no judgments imposed, no incredibly impossible demands made on me. They just looked at me, they understood me, and it was safe, there was no stigma. There were people like you, us, our people. And that's what, that's what this is about. Stomping out stigma. Showing people who you are, who we are. You are incredibly beautiful beacons of hope. One day in recovery, 38 years in recovery, on the approach to recovery, maybe harming yourself a little bit less these days, you are beacons of hope. For those out there in the dark, in the shadows, languishing, they need to see you be visible. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for not passing for someone who doesn't have a history. Thank you for showing it willingly, for having that courage. That's what it takes. We've come a long way in Vermont. We're changing our language all the time, using language that's less stigmatizing. We all know about that. It's beautiful. The Office of Alcohol and Drug Abuse Programs just became the Division of Substance Use Services, less stigmatizing language. We have people helping people with histories of drug addiction, find employment, get student loans, get into school, get housing. We're, we've come a long way. We're enjoying rights, but we have a long way to go. Stigma, stigma is still alive and well in Vermont. It's still alive and well in America, and it needs us. It's gonna come from us, and the more we do it, the more we show people who we are, the more we expand. It's ironic how we free people who see us through a lens of, st a lens of stigma. stigma. We free them. We help them to unlearn stigma and unleash compassion. And believe me, and in a world colored by compassion, 
is much more fun, much more livable, much more joyous than an inner world colored by stigma. So I want to just thank you today. I'm Eddie. I couldn't be happier to be here. Have fun today. Enjoy yourselves today. Enjoy each other today. And keep, keep showing the world who we are. Thank you. Thank you. Up next for our guest speaker is Lisa Lord from Recovery Vermont. Let's give it up for Lisa. Hello, Rutland. Very nice to see you all today. Big thank you to Ed Baker. And for those of you who would like more Ed Baker, because we only had a few minutes of Ed Baker, you can you can Google Ed Baker Addiction Recovery Channel or Ed Baker TV, and Ed Baker has a whole television channel that is all about addiction recovery. So check that out. Lots of inspiration and education and hope right there. I am so honored and so privileged to be here. We're all here to stomp out stigma. As Ed mentioned, it's alive and well, and it is shifting. There is, There are more and more people who are speaking out about being in recovery, and the more people who are sharing about their recovery, the more that it becomes visible, the hope, the inspiration. I am honored and privileged every single day for the work that I get to do with Recovery Vermont, and I'm grateful to be here today. I do have like a small little list of notes because otherwise I will go on and on and on. Um, in terms of stigma, every single one of us can play a role, whether we are in recovery, whether we are a loved one to someone in recovery, whether we are an ally to someone in recovery, whether we, whether we are law enforcement or fire department, whether we are business owners, everyone plays a role in stomping out stigma. Those of you who love someone in recovery or in recovery know the grit and the perseverance and the dedication and the faith that a recovery journey takes to continue. And if someone doesn't have those things at the start of a recovery journey, they develop those things. And recovery, being in recovery, I think should be something that goes on a resume as a skill because the amount of development, personal development that translates to professional workplaces and just life in general, um, it's, it's astounding. And it's time for that to really be recognized. Well, the time for that was like a long time ago, <laughs> but we can't go back in the future. So we'll do those things moving forward. I would ask that any business owners that are here or people who play a role in a business, that you have a huge opportunity to break down stigma in your community because workplaces are where the majority of community gathers. And that is loudly and proudly hiring people in recovery. That is supporting people in recovery with comprehensive wellness programs at work that support treatment and recovery services. And you have policies that ensure people that their jobs are being held for them so they know that they have work to return to. It's a critical piece of recovery. So all those business owners out there or HR departments, wherever you are in the business, please loudly and proudly support recovery because you play a huge role in the community following in your footsteps to break down some of the stigma. Every one of us can and must play our part. And there is a community of folks here that plays an enormous role in breaking down stigma. Can I see um, a show of hands for all the recovery coaches that are here? I know we've got some from Rutland, we've got some from Middlebury, the Addison Turning Point. Yay! And then what about some hands for the certified recovery coaches? Look at that. All right, big, hand, big round of applause, please, for all of the recovery coaches and the work that they are doing. These recovery coaches support 
people, Ed mentioned all these different aspects of recovery. The contemplating recovery, the early part of recovery, a long established recovery. Recovery coaches support people in every stage of recovery. And I am honored and I am privileged that in the work that I do with Recovery Vermont, I get to be involved in, in the role that recovery coaches play. I play a little role, I help them with their training, but they are out there and they are doing life-changing work. And the value of recovery coaching cannot be um, shouted loudly enough because they are changing lives and developing as people in, in really astounding ways and really paving the path for what is possible for people in recovery. And so deep thank you to all of the recovery coaches who are here. If you are not yet familiar with the recovery centers, visit, they have got tables here, check them out. Um, say hello to your recovery coaches and thank them for the work that they're doing in breaking down stigma and supporting the growth of folks in their community throughout their recovery journey. The ripple effect that recovery coaches make is immeasurable. You know that in your work, you are helping individuals. What you can't and will never ever be able to measure is the ripple effect and impact that that has because the people you're impacting impact other people who impact other people and it just it's a ripple that extends farther than you'll ever be able to measure. And so big shout out, big thank you, huge recognition and acknowledgement for the impact that recovery coaches are making in Vermont. I hope everyone has an amazing day. I'm super excited to be here. Um, definitely dunk some folks in the dunk tank. Watch the apple pie. I don't know if it's apple, but the pie, no, it's not apple. But the pie eating contest, I hear there still might be a spot or two. So if you're hungry, maybe um, enter the pie eating contest. Thank you all so much for being here and let's keep stomping out stigma. Good afternoon. I'm so happy the Turning Point Center of Rutland has sponsored this event today. For too long, stigma and judgment it made it harder for those struggling with substance use disorder for them to get the support and treatment they need to recover. As a community, a state, and a country, we need to recognize that substance use disorder is a disease. It's an illness, not a moral failing. And just like other diseases, it doesn't discriminate based on the color of a person's skin or their income. And with so many other challenges, the pandemic has made combating substance abuse more challenging. It's cutting those in recovery off in their support systems. It's leaving people isolated and more likely to use and to overdose. But if isolation increased risk, then community, like the community gathered here today, reduces it. Please join me in letting people struggling with substance abuse in Rutland County, and actually throughout Vermont, know that they're valued, they're cared for, and we're all here to help. The first step to recovery is the willingness of that person to take that step. And when we're there with open arms and with real acknowledgement of what an incredible accomplishment it is to make that step, that's really, really important in the recovery process. And it's important for our community because all of us are in this together. So I want to acknowledge the work you're doing and how absolutely essential it is. And everything I can do in Washington to try to get the resources to you back home, you're really doing the hard work. I'll do all I can to get the resources so you can continue helping one Vermonter at a time. Thank you very much. Thing you can oh, use is your mouth. I need a job.
So if everyone wants to start taking their pies out, I will come over and I will let you know when to start. Again, no touching the pies with your hands. Well, you can when you take them out. But, yeah, keep them behind your back. If you are to touch your mouth at any point time during the competition, you are disqualified. And if you have the uh oh moment, so we all know there. Watch out. Turn around quick. One, two, three, go! Woo! Go, Dan, go! Go, go! Come on, Chad! Come on, Chad! Go, go! Kyle's, come on! Kyle's being on you! Come on, Chad! Go for it! You get that high, Kyle? Go, Chad! I'll give you a ring!